Okay, let's take some measurements. What we want to do is take this lid off. So you got three screws on the back, and this is for the F3.5 or the SUD error. We want to verify if it is the CCU or if it's the uh, the pressure sensor. So once you remove those three screws, 932nd screws, or T20 Torx, or you can use a 7 metric. Put this off to the side. Okay, here's our CCU right here. What we want to do is stick a screwdriver down here, pop this out so we can slide the CCU that way, and then we'll be able to get to the connectors that go to the pressure sensor. In the other video, I show you how to take this pressure sensor off and look at those readings, and uh, you have to take the pressure sensor apart to get to those pads on the board. This way, you can just look at the CCU, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Okay, it's Jeff again. I want to go over a little bit of safety. Because remember, whenever this machine's plugged in, we have power on the CCU. We have 120 volts, plus we've got the 5 volt rail, which powers up the uh, pressure sensor. And what I do is I put a towel over here, just to cover up this bar here. That way, if you're leaning in here, you don't want to get a tickle if your finger touches one of your probes while you're holding it on. And I think it's less likely for measuring at the CCU. Uh, I was more likely to hit it when I was probing the, uh, the circuit board in my other video on the pressure sensor. So just a little bit of safety. I'm not sure it's a dry towel or a piece of cardboard, a piece of wood, something that's non-conductive across here would be helpful. That way you don't get tickled. And then um, we're going to get this machine fixed for you. Thanks. Okay, once we slide the CCU down, going to have to take the wires out of this connector right here. Pop that connector loose, the holder. And then we're going to pull the CCU out like this. And... Last one out. I'm going to flip it around like this. Okay. I'll have to get a different angle on that. I'll show you where the pins are for the pressure sensor. Alright, there's the board up close. Go ahead and zoom in. Uh, not too far. Alright, there you can see where it says PS8 pressure sensor. Now the very first wire on the left is ground and then the second wire is the, the actual level of the pressure sensor. Should be about 0.38 with the tub empty. And then the third wire is the 5 volt supply. I'm not sure if I'm going to Let's go ahead and touch that. So the first one is ground. The second one is Okay, so if we can pull back out just a little bit so you can see the meter. Okay, so there's 0.385. Now if we start the machine up, get that back on there. Now there's some little holes in the board. You can actually stick the probes in there, and that helps keep them stable so they don't slide around. Okay, I can start it. So we start at about 0.386, and when the uh, the tub will fill, and then it will stop at about 0.7 the first stop.
So this is pins one and two going left to right on the PS8 connector, which is a pressure sensor. I should hear the water dispenser change the setting. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, just turn in the tub, basket. And there's the water. And you'll see the meter start to go up. There it goes. And it should stop. It ends up being about 0.7. And as it sloshes around, so it'll change. So it bounces around quite a bit. So that's how you check that. And then if we want to check the 5 volt supply, I just go from pin pin 1 to pin 3. And I turn my meter up. Oops. Three. <laughs> the tub's moving. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can hold it. Yeah, five point oh three. So, as you can see, it's pretty easy to check your pressure sensor. You should get about point three eight to point four with the tub empty. I'm going to go and turn it back off. Okay, I'm going to drain the tub out. I went and started another cycle, so it should drain the tub out because uh, it's going to have water in there. And then um, we'll put the CCU back where it should be. So if you get low voltage on that pin one to pin two measurement, you'll want to look at the pressure sensor itself. And also, you want to check your five volt supply. Make sure it's nice and good. It should be about 5.03, 5.1. Now also remember, this thing's always powered up, whether the machine's off or not. Uh, as long as your AC's plugged in, this will have power on it. So you can measure this without even turning the machine on. And that's why I recommend you have a uh, surge protector because you know, this power supply is always connected with the door closed. Matter of fact, I'm going to I'm going to try it with the door open and see if we still got power. Okay, I'm going to check the uh, power supply with the door closed. Okay, I got uh, 5.03. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to open the door up. Yeah, 5.03, 5.04. So, yeah, this thing is always powered up. <clears throat> so, we'll want to unplug it when we start playing with that again. And uh, we've got to put it back in its spot. You got to check this pin down here, make sure it's in the uh, cutout and sheet metal for it. There's a square cutout for it. And then that helps keep the board from rocking back and forth. So you click it back in there. And then we put our wires back in this uh, harness holder here. So what we've done is we've we slid the CCU out so we can take a look at the PS8 connection. And pin one is the ground and pin two is the pressure level output signal. And then pin three is the five volt signal from the control board to the pressure sensor. By verifying this, we can tell if either the pressure sensor is bad, if you have a low voltage, uh, the pressure sensor I had, the original one, before I fixed it, it was 0.161 volts instead of 0.38. And the machine would come up with the SUD and the F35. So uh, I put another sensor in, that fixed it. So I took the old sensor apart and looked at it, 
and decided to change that pressure sensor. So I purchased the pressure sensor, put it in, checked the voltage, and I was getting you know, 0.38. So you can repair the pressure sensor, and I'm putting together a kit for that right now. And uh, if you find out you do have a bad pressure sensor, you can repair that instead of buying a new one. It saves some money and a service call. Okay, hope this was helpful. This is Jeff Hartman, the Neptune Man.